halfway through and we still don't really know what the deal is with all these restrictions going on we don't really know where most of us stand people that are going back to their native homes in the continent or somewhere in europe are struggling with what to do should you stick or should you twist because you don't want to leave go see your family and then how when you come back suddenly the rules change and you're unable to come back to your actual home where you live you know on the daily basis so it's a whole hassle going on the moment people are stressed people are worried you've got all the bar so you've got all the landlords no so all the pub landlords all the bar owners all the event space owners sweating and stressing as well because with all these new mandates and rules coming in certain companies have basically cancelled their christmas parties and if you know anything about big corporations or sometimes even small little companies they usually go and hire out a space hire out a hall get people to come eat dinner whatever drink get be merry and then you leave in it but if these things are coming in place, usually they're just going to scrap it because if anything, it's going to save them money too. So they'd be quick to scrap it. So a lot of places are scrapping the Christmas pie, which of course is negatively impacting people's ability to do catering and just really putting all, everything up in the air. And we don't really have any resolution at the moment. I think the only thing we've got so far is the rules around vaccine passports. That's obviously gone through um, in the House of Commons. You know, obviously a, a majority of the MPs end up voting for it on both sides of the aisle, which is again a bit upsetting because you would imagine there'd be a lot more dissenting voices, but I guess we are where we are with that sort of stuff. No point going in in it too deep. But the rules are still a bit confusing. So I've kind of got up a little article about it now on the Metro because I can't get up on the screen because the Metro's got mad crazy ad blockers on it and stuff. But essentially, this is a headline from the Metro. It says, how will they enforce this rule? Bars only have to check COVID passes after 1 a.m. Right? It's a really crazy rule that they've put in place. It doesn't really make any sense. Similar to what they were doing before where they said, oh, if you go to like a restaurant, you don't need to. No, if you go to a restaurant, you don't need to. No, if you go to a restaurant, you need to have put a mask on. But if you go to a bar, you don't need to have one on. Which is bizarre, right? For some whatever reason. But it says the following. Securing staff at late night bars are going to have a tough time as soon as it is 1 a.m. From tomorrow, venues can choose not to check for people's COVID passes until after this time, according to the government's guidance it published yesterday. This suggests someone could walk in unchecked at 11 p.m., spend two hours shoulder to shoulder with other patrons before being asked to pass by for a pass by the bouncers. So you could get in, get sloshed, and then if you don't have your pass, you could end up leaving. But by that time, you could have already done mad amount of damage if you are positive, right? That's the whole thinking behind it. Crazy. It continues to say here, even if they didn't have proof of vaccination or negative tests, there will have been plenty of time for them to spread coronavirus across the dance floor. The new guidance have caused a bit of a confusion at the Department of Health, says nightclubs and dance halls and discotheques are required to check COVID statuses for visitors at all times. So pubs are different, but nightclubs are different. And I think the only delineation that I've been able to see so far if I'm not mistaken, it's some weird number. There's like a, I think it's like 499 or 399. Someone leave that. If you're over the line, then obviously you get classified as a nightclub or something. And if you're under it, you can get classified as a, as a bar or restaurant. It's a really strange, bizarre rule, to be completely honest. It continues here, it says, but it says other late night dance venues, whatever they are, must take responsible measures to ensure anyone who is present between the hours of 1 and 5 a.m., which is not a lot of places because not a lot of places in the UK are open between those times anyway. This applies even if they've entered the premises before that time, which suggests staff would have the difficulty task of making their way through the room of drunken revelers to check their passes, which is ignoramously dumb. But what they're going to do, more likely than not, because I reckon most venues are probably just going to ignore this rule. But what they're going to do, they're going to set an example and they're going to go and bum rush one venue with loads of their flipping um, piggies in a flipping van. They're going to go and find some, you know, small bar that's probably just about having their head above water. And then that's going to scare everybody else to either shut up shop or to continue checking passes. That's what's going to end up happening because I've already seen it kind of happen already. One of the bars I love to go to in Clapton called Blondie's. It's kind of essentially like a metal kind of punk bar, a really cool little dive bar. They decided to close just now. They've just, they've kind of announced it on their Instagram. And most of it has to come from the conclusion around these passes and also the unlikelihood that they're going to be able to be, you know, coercing through or kind of rummaging through a group of flipping mosh pitters and stuff. People crowd surfing in this tiny little shoe box of a um, flipping dive bar and able to get people's passes and stuff. And if anything, a lot of people that go there, you'd imagine, are going to be stringently, I would assume, anti-government and obviously anti-vaccination so you can't imagine even that being a good idea in the first place so i just don't understand it i really don't it just makes complete nonsense it's just going to cause so much havoc 
A continued here says it's not quite clear what the Department of Health distinction between nightclubs and other late night venues means. It says venues that have two, so it says venues have two options other over when to implement the checks, either the time the venue opens or from when the rules apply at 1am. So they can either start doing it when they open the doors just to make it easy or they can do it at 1am, which sounds logistically tricky to say the least. Of course it does. An example given by the government of how the new system would work also says a bar is open throughout the day and stays open later than 1am, but who's not? Honestly, these people, I don't know if they've been to actual bars. Like, who's in a bar before, like, 6 a p 6 p.m. if you're not an alcoholic, just hanging out there? Not many people. Most of the times that they get the actual big money or they get the most money, I can imagine, through the till, is going to be sometime around the evening. So it's still a ball, like... It says here, yeah, uh, um, it meets the criteria for mandatory use of the NHS COVID vaccine pass because it provides music and dance for serves and alcohol and stays open later than 1am. The manager is not required to check the COVID passes of anyone who leaves the venue before 1am but must take responsible, sorry, reasonable measures to ensure that everyone who remains in or enters the premises after 1am has a NHS COVID pass or other accepted evidence. As you'd expect, people who took to social media to express their confusion on the new system, local coach Liz Harrington said the following, Good to know COVID has a good sense of time. Twelve fifty nine, it stays dormant. One AM, it springs into action. Very true. Nigel Horner said somebody actually sat at the computer screen and wrote the sentence, and that's probably some of the things to take away from this. I think in general, I've always kind of had a little bit of a delusional sense of self in terms of my abilities and in terms of my ability to land jobs, in terms of my ability to be successful, to make money to get famous whatever it may be I've had a real delusional sense of all that sort of stuff but most of it hasn't just come from the fact that I think I'm awesome it's also come from the fact that you look around you see other people doing way better than you are who aren't as who aren't that much smarter than you right they're not that much um uh well put together they haven't necessarily done the education as much as you have yet they're striving so it's not my fault that I kind of believe in myself and I look at people who have dis supposedly gone to some of the best course schools in the country, best universities, private school led, have always had a quote unquote silver spoon in their mouth. And this is the sort of, um, this is the way that they think they're going to deal adequately with this new strain of COVID that's out there at the moment. That's supposedly meant to be mild, supposedly meant to be serious, conflicting information coming around it. But all these years, especially the last two years, supposedly, right, of time that we've had, evidence we've had to gather, experience this is the best option that they have to deal with covid in nightlife situation this is the best option they have of course it's better than them closing them don't get me wrong it's better to them you know shutting them for long periods of time and people can't work or people can't have a place to go and have a bit of a release valve yeah sure but surely there has to be a better option than this surely there's a better option surely there has to be because this is so dumb the height of dumb dumb which is why again i believe in myself so much when it comes to the stuff that i do and i think you should do the same it comes here, another bewildered Brit wrote, nice to know that the virus has such an amazing timekeeping skills. It only infects people after 1 a.m. while a clever virus. But Kate Nicholas, um, the CEO of Hospitality, interpreted the rules as applying to any venues with a dance floor that serve alcohol after 1 a.m., irrespective sorry, of size and time of the event. And again, I recommend if you're from the UK and you want to keep abreast of what's going on in terms of nightlife, in terms of COVID and all that sort of stuff, I definitely recommend you check out this guy called Adam Brooks, who's got a pub, I think, somewhere in Wanstead or something like that he owns a pub and he's really cool in terms of following him in terms of his insights you know being a pub landlord and an event book and all that sort of stuff of course Sasha Lord um, the guy in Manchester who's basically the nighttime advisor he's like a way better version of our what's her name Amy Lammy whatever right Amy Lammy is a flipping donut but at least Sasha Lord actually knows what he's doing and then thirdly you got Kate Nicholas um, sorry Kate Nichols who's a CEO of the Hospitality um, UK in the UK of course um, she's definitely a great follower in that regard but yeah it's a whole lot of confusion no one really knows what's going on 